Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Shall I? Yeah. Today I'll be presenting a case of 41 year old male who was referred from a local hospital to our ER with a lacerative wound on right forearm suspecting any vascular injury. On 10 second assessment, patient was conscious oriented, airway was patent, there was no secretion, breathing part. Go to the local examination and okay. circulation you can just mention. On circulation, patient had a lacerated wound and it was bandaged from outside and on examination, the, there was soakage of the bandage. So, hence we had given one more GAMG covering on the wound and then BP, everything is okay. uh, BP was normal. BP was 120 over 70 with a pulse rate of 85 per minute. At this time, we had put a cannula and given injection tranexia uh, 1 gram uh, in 100 ml NS over 20 minutes. Okay. And uh, on uh, disability, patient was having a pain score of 9 out of 10. And this time we had given an injection PCM, 1 gram IV stat. Okay. So, presume to be, keep your eye here. Presume to be where injury somewhere here. Yes, sir. Right. So, we will put a lacerated wound over this area. This is the laceration. So, it's all been, co been covered. And uh, uh, that is the situation. So, now what will you do? Imagine that is the patient's hand. Uh, so initially uh, it was uh, all uh, bandaged mm. from outside and came okay. so uh, on examination first mm. we had uh, removed the bandage for inspection mm. and on inspection we had seen an 18 to 1 centimeter laceration okay. over the ulnar aspect 4 centimeter above the wrist joint and uh, there was uh, active bleeding coming mm. from the wound side okay. so uh, patient had uh, given a history of uh, wound uh, being got by hitting on a glass okay so we had inspected whether any uh, foreign materials that is glass pieces was there uh, so that was done in the inspection part mm. and then uh, no bony or tendons was exposed on the wound area then uh, any role for tourniquet yeah uh, uh, tourniquet can be usually not applied mm. see uh, when will you ask for a tourniquet in case of an uh, limb injuries where you can 100% say, okay, you can apply a tourniquet. Uh, in patients with uh, long bone injuries Sorry. with active bleeding, bleeding. within circulation part is hypotension. Mm. We can, uh, initially, we can give GAMG padding. If mm. active bleeding is so there, we can go on with yeah. the tourniquet application. So, uh, that is again a controversial distal flow, everything is a problem. One area where there is an amputated limb. So, this amputated stump is getting mm. bleed. There is no contraindication for your tourniquet. So, there is one area you can give 100% tourniquet application. Okay, nice but rest, uh, that may be a life saving. You might have to think whenever we speak about a trauma, limb saving versus life saving. Uh, there has been situation where the patient has bled from an injury where uh, you can do and apply a tourniquet but it was not applied and patient has died. So, the situation remains totally different in an emergency room per se where we can shift him directly to the theatre and we can directly identify where the bleeding is happening and where you can do a direct uh, bleeding control. Maybe tourniquet might be controversial, but the same thing when we are talking regarding somewhere in the pre-hospital setting or maybe in a trauma or maybe in a war situation where it is going to be a life saving. We are going to reach very after very long time. So the tourniquet application may be justifiable during time. So that doesn't mean that tourniquet should be applied in an emergency room per se. You are seeing a patient 60 by 40 blood pressure. You don't have any products available. The patient is actively bleeding. You don't have any other go to do that. Maybe transiently we can go about it not not like prolonged period like more, not more than like 20 yeah. to 30 minutes one hour mm -hmm. should not be done maybe initially maybe for few minutes till you achieve your hemostasis so that is a role so you have to be very 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 clear when you are teaching this tourniquet regarding that a lot of controversy and many people will not be agreeing to the fact but tourniquet can be given depending upon the situation and where the patient is and where you are going to treat the patient. So, that is the difference between tourniquet. So, now we have got an active 8 centimeter long injury and which is actively bleeding. So, what will you do now? You have done the inspection. inspection. Mm. Then coming to the palpation, we have... So, inspection, you are seeing an active bleed. So, you have to act accordingly. Okay. So, without that, we cannot go further. So, our trauma, whatever be the uh, examination that we are doing, we are finding a problem. We have to resolve that problem also. So, what can be done to stop that uh, bleeding? We had initially given a GAMG padding mm. uh, type uh, dressing so that compression can be applied okay. in order to stop the bleeding. So, further palpation may not be a warrant and an ideal thing by exploring the wound more may not be an ideal thing to do at this point of time. Uh, maybe later on, maybe some uh, uh, 
plot formation would have happened and we are trying to disrupt that. So, may not be an ideal situation. So, regarding the same patient coming from an outdoor hospital, the wound is packed well and uh, you wanted to see the wound. You wanted to explore and know the treatment planning. So, without getting all your equipments in hand, it is not ideally to open up. Maybe just opening up in the dressing room can be a disastrous thing. So, it can start bleeding again and it will become horrendous bleeding and it will be a problem again. So, that part you have to take care. You have to make sure that you are made, made up all the backup plans if the patient is going to be an active bleeding again. Right now, he is not in hypotension. So, we have time. So, he might not have lost like 10 to 15 percentage of blood will be the maximum. There is not even tachycardia. So, he has not even gone to a class 2 shock. So, maybe a class 1 shock. So, he can go into a tachycardia and class 2, class 3 at any point of time. So, that mindset you should have. And when you are having a patient with class 2 shock. So, class 2 shock, when you are going to open and again bleeding is open, he is going to going for a class 3 and class 4. So, those uh, parameters you need to keep in your mind and start exploring the uh, wound further. Hmm? So, uh, then we had uh, checked for the pulsations since there was active bleeding. So, we had checked radial and ulnar artery pulsations. We were getting good radial artery pulsation but ulnar artery was not palpable. And then uh, after checking the pulse, we had also checked the sensations over the palma region. So, in the ulnar aspect, patient was not having sensation over the medial one and a half region. region. So, okay, agree. One more thing I just wanted to do, uh, ulnar artery. Okay, so you are thinking in terms of an ulnar artery injury. So, ulnar artery, you have given a small bandage compression there and uh, how how you routinely check for the, ideally it should be done when before you are doing an ABG. Mm -hmm. ABG you have to do, you have to do the mm -hmm. modified Allen's test. test. So, can you just elaborate how will yeah. you do the modified Usually, Allen's test? Usually, uh, in modified Allen's test, we will occlude the uh, mm. ulnar artery and radial artery simultaneously. Uh, you can ask the and patient then to? ask the patient to open and close the uh, uh, palm. Uh, after 3 to six, 6 seconds, we will uh, release the compression over the ulnar artery. Mm. And then, uh, if the uh, circulation is normal, then the palm will become pink. Normal circulation will be there. If the ulnar artery is compromised, then the palm will be still pale in color. Pale in color. So, that is again very important before you do ideal and arterial blood gas, not an arterial line insertion, we have to do this. So, if the collateral is already damaged, the same thing can okay. we can do here also. We cannot ask him to lift and rest. Maybe you can just give a compression and see how the circulation color change is happening and maybe putting an SPO2 pro also will give you some idea. But if it is very deep only, uh, you need to suspect ulnar artery. But probably there is actively spurting, bleeding and all, you will have uh, ulnar artery because again, it is just like radial artery, ulnar artery is a superficial structure just protected by a one or two tendons that is the only thing so it can also get injured very superficially ok so now coming to the neurological examination so can you just tell uh, uh, the dermatomal or the how the nerve supply is arranged in the palm uh, in the palm usually the medial <laughs> one and a half fingers will be supplied by the ulnar <laughs> and the lateral three and a half will be supplied by the uh, median and also the dorsum the tips will be also supplied and the complete other dorsum this part will be supplied by the radial Nerve. So, that is the uh, nerve, uh, nerve distribution will be okay. there and then coming to Suppose the I wanted to check ulnar radio on one single area, where will you ask for? Which little finger? Little finger you can check, that is the only uh, tip of the little finger will be only supplied by Dorsal the... Dorsal aspect? Dorsal aspect, we can check the uh, space can be also checked. Okay. Right. Space can and be the second? second. Ring finger, Ring finger also, also you can. can check. Okay. So, uh, then coming to the muscle. So, you have done your sensory part. Mm -hmm. So, we have done inspection. Mm -hmm. You have done with the palpation. We have not avoided in situation. We have just done for the sensation. Now, the motor function assessment. Yes. So, motor function, how will you assess now? Uh, in this patient, we could only... So, we are suspecting a probable ulnar nerve injury. As you said, the patient was not feeling sensation on the ulnar one and half side finger or medial one and half fingers. So, we usually say ulnar one and half side. Uh, mm -hmm. Ulnar side, it is one and half fingers. It is not having sensation. Now, motor motor function in this patient we had tried asked him to flex the uh, distal phalangeal joints he was not able to flex then we had tried for the proximal phalange that also he was not able then metacarpophalangeal joint also this here wrist we were not being elicit because patient was having severe pain so we couldn't elicit it all the flexions at all these three joints was compromised in this patient okay 
so we had uh, come to know that uh, the usually the ulna supplies the uh, flexor digitorum profundus which helps in the flexion of the distal phalangeal all uh, and also the flexor uh, flexor carpi ulnaris also supplies to the uh, little fingers so all those were compromised leading us to a, a clue of ulnar nerve ulnar injury. injury now the my next question would be how will you differentiate between an ulnar injury at the level of wrist and at the level of cubital fossa how will you differentiate that uh, ulnar nerve usually comes through the medial part of the uh, for, uh, arm mm. and uh, then uh, it goes behind the medial epicondyle uh, and then it enters the forearm by uh, in the piercing the piercing the um, flexor carpi ulnaris and then in the forearm it gives the flexor digitorum profundus and flexor carpi ulnaris so if the injury is above uh, here in the elbow then they will be uh, difficulty in flexion of the wrist along with the uh, three joints in the hands if the uh, injury is in along the wrist then the the uh, flexion in the wrist will be preserved oh, but all the other three joints so whatever has happened to this patient it will be happening to this so that is one key thing ulnar nerve can get injured these are the two common set of ulnar nerve injury one is at the elbow Elbow. What is the injuries that you can have? Uh, elbow dislocation, the uh, most common elbow dislocation, mm -hmm. supracondylar fractures, fractures, condylar fractures. This all you can have ulnar nerve injury, and because it's a very one of the very superficial nerve, and it can get injured there, or it can get injured at the Guyon's uh, canal. canal. So this is the Guyon's canal, and this is the cubital area. Related. So these are the two areas where you can get injured for your uh, uh, ulnar uh, artery. Oh, sorry, ulnar nerve. No. Okay. So that is the nerve. Any other nerve that you wanted to examine in this patient? Uh, we had checked for the radial also there for in in palpation radial pulse was uh, felt so radial artery we didn't have any suspicion then uh, coming to the motor part if there is uh, we had checked for the, any uh, flexor deformity in the lateral three and a half fingers so uh, pa here patient only we could elicit in the tip of the fingers so that it was not compromised in the patient and then uh, we can also uh, see for the radial uh, nerve also radial nerve uh, as told before the sensation will be on the uh, th this portion uh, leaving the tip aspect. leaving the tip the dorsal portion mm -hmm. will be supplied mm -hmm. anatomical, snuff anatomical snuff box also will be okay so that is regarding your medial nerve radial nerve that is your dermatomal supply now can you tell me what are the special tests that you wanted to do in case of a hand injury yeah in in case of an ulnar nerve usually <laughs> ulnar nerve uh, supplies the uh, th uh, third and fourth lumbricals then the uh, palmar introche dorsal introche and also the uh, flexor it can uh, be free uh, and also the flexor digiti minimi, abductor digiti minimi and opponents digiti minimi okay. and in thenar muscle it supplies the adductor pollicis also. So coming to uh, of different muscles to test the palmar in Roche, we can do a, a card test. So uh, we ask the patient to hold the card in between the fingers and then we can uh, the examiner can pull it from the opposite side. So if the patient can hold the card uh, uh, with the power then the palmar in Roche is intact that is patient can adduct its function is to adduct so this is the card test then coming to the dorsal in Roche, there are two tests igawa test or the fanning, fanning can be test. done in igawa test we ask the patient to keep the uh, palm fixed on the surface and then we ask the middle finger to move from the midline as such uh, move the middle finger to the sides, sides. so he, that means he is able to abduct, abduct. Uh, also fanning against resistance can also be asked ask the patient to fan the fingers and give resistance, give resistance in between so that is can also be done yeah. then we can also elicit the book test in order to test for the adductor policies so here we ask the patient to catch the book usually we uh, hold it with the adductor policies if it is compromised then we get a sign known as from sign, sign where we uses the flexor palmaris longus to which hold is supplied it. by anterior interosseous nerve or the flexor palmaris brevis which is supplied by the median nerve. Median nerve. So, so this is a positive test so i will just try to normal this is normal abnormal so this is abnormal so flexor palmaris longus they are trying to hold so these are the named tests because it's very important things in an ED. These are simple tests that we can do at the bedside and we can easily elicit uh, which all groups are involved. Then finally one more. Uh, in, yeah. In case of the medial nerve also we yeah. have named tests like this. Pen test can be elicited in yeah. the patient. Yeah. We ask the patient to keep the uh, hand on a firm surface and then point the pen. So if the patient's abductor policies is intact then patient can point to the pen. So uh, that indicates the uh, uh, 
ഡയമണ്ട്രോ and in case of radial nerve there are four types of injury when the injury is uh, in the lower part uh, then uh, we'll be having finger drop and the thumb drop thumb. will be there when it is lower nerve injury that is happening around the uh, condyle then they will be so along with this drops there will be sensory loss then when it is high radial nerve injury will be all, also having wrist, wrist drop. drop and very high nerve injury patient will be not able to uh, flex, the, flex elbow. the elbow so the, those are the test for the radial, radial nerve. nerve okay so radial nerve where it is commonly getting injured usually in the neck of uh, humerus will be getting uh, otherwise in the, the shaft, shaft, shaft is the most shaft commonly also injured. will be get So uh, what happened to this patient now? Uh, so this patient initially we had given injection tranexamic acid TTs were given mm. we had also given antibiotics because it was not a uh, this and tetanus prophylaxis tetanus prophylaxis injection TT was given Okay so what will be the tetanus prophylaxis that is required for this patient ideal uh, So whether you have to decide whether it's a tetanus prone wound or non tetanus prone wound and the next thing is immunization yes, status yes, of the patient depending upon yes. that you can decide tetanus prone wound What is a tetanus prone wound? Uh, if it is not clear borders and mm. if it is open contaminated, contaminated more than six wound. hours, yes. it is kept open. There is a lot of debris. Everything is there. That is a tetanus, tetanus prone wound. wound. So this is a, is it a tetanus prone no, wound? It was like clean. It's just a clean cut wound, like a surgical knife. Right. It was like a clean cut wound because of the glass uh, laceration. So it's not a tetanus prone wound. So tetanus uh, toxoid would be uh, TT will be more than enough, and tetanus immunoglobulin is not indicated as of now. and then patient was uh, given a cold slip and taken to the ot for uh, immediate repair and on exploration there was a uh, ulnar nerve and ulnar artery cut injury and also the tendons flexor digitorum superficialis profundus and flexor carpi ulnaris uh, tendon damage also was there, there. so everything so was repaired so uh, post recovered uh, complete motor power came uh, back just uh, d- done the post repair uh, oh, since okay. only 2 days is over okay okay, okay. so uh, what is your take home message in this cases what will you want to brief so if any patient uh, comes and we are suspecting her uh, neurovascular uh, damage then we have to initially find out which nerve is damaged based on the told a test name test we can fo- find out which nerve is damaged and if any artery is damaged also initial importance should be given to control the bleeding Hemorrh- and prevent the hemorrhagic shock of the patient any x ray was done for that uh, we had done also an x ray uh, of wrist with uh, forearm why we have taken an x ray because um, in order to find out any bony da- injury was there we had taken the other bony injury i want to look for any fragment of pieces so that is the most most because it's a glass no mm-hmm. maybe a glass piece can broken glass piece can be there inside mm-hmm. bony fracture we are not suspecting in this case so mostly it look for any foreign bodies mm-hmm. so that is the then only we will come to know and local ultrasound maybe plus or minus but x ray is more than enough easily available so an x ray will be more than sufficient in that situation okay fine okay thank you